Well, each of you should now have your piece of paper and a pen, hopefully. Um, and what I need you to do is I need you to make three columns on your paper. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I just kind of want you to participate in this. So in the first column, I want you to write God. And then I want you to just take a moment and list things that you know about God, maybe names that God has, characteristics of God, stories that you know of God. I just want you to quickly jot down some things you know about God. Okay, now in the second column, I want you to title that Jesus. And do the same thing. Jot down things that you know about Jesus. Stories you have heard. Characteristics. Now, you know, might know where the third column is going, but I want you to write down Holy Spirit. And once again, what do you know about the Holy Spirit? Okay, now this exercise was not about making you feel bad what you do and do not know, but it was more of making you aware about how much you know about God and about Jesus and the Holy Spirit. When you're looking at your lists, which list is larger? Let me see a show of hands if God was the list you had the most written down about. Okay, how about Jesus? Quite a few. And the Holy Spirit? I see a couple. The truth is we feel like we don't know as much about the Holy Spirit because it's easy to turn into our Bibles and read about the stories of God. In the Old Testament, there's, there's a lot about God. And we learn so many different names of God. We can walk out in creation and know that God created those things. And we learn a little more about God. Jesus, of course, is very easy for us to relate to for the most part. First of all, he became human. We know human. We are human. So we can kind of relate to Jesus a little more. Plus, we have all the stories in the Gospels that teach us about Jesus and who he was and his characteristics. And then we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a lot harder to grasp because we can't define it, define the Holy Spirit in the way that we are, human-wise, for the Holy Spirit didn't have the limitations that Jesus had. Right? Jesus, he had to sleep at some point. He had to get away from people occasionally to renew. But the Holy Spirit is within us, is everywhere at once. And how do you get that? How do you understand that? I've heard the phrase often from people, oh, if only Jesus were here, things would be so much clearer. We would understand, you know, what this means or what that means. But that's a misinter... That is so a misperception. 
Because how many people, when Jesus was walking on this earth, totally did not get it? They missed what he was saying. Even the disciples struggled to understand what Jesus was saying. And so in today's scripture and in some other scriptures that we can look up regarding the Holy Spirit, Jesus says that the Holy Spirit will be able to teach you what I couldn't teach you. That might not be a direct quote, but it gives you the idea of where this is going. We don't have it worse off because Jesus isn't here sitting among us. Stand, well, Jesus, I would hope, would be up here and not me <laughs> if he were here. But the truth is, in some ways, we have it better. Because while Jesus taught his disciples and taught on the Sermon on the Mount, he could only, he was so limited on what he could do. Think with me a minute. With the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is in you, Tina. And you know what? The Holy Spirit knows you, knows where you are in your spiritual walk, and knows exactly what it is that God wants you to work on in your life. But you know what? At the same time, Byron, the Holy Spirit is in you, knows you, is teaching you, guiding you, directing you in where you are being called and what you need to work on. But you know what? It's not just you two. Pam, the Holy Spirit is in you and working in you at the same time that the Holy Spirit is working in every one of us here. Jesus couldn't do that, couldn't be that specific. He didn't have the time. He had those human limitations. And here we have the gift of the Holy Spirit who can work in each and every one of us at the same time. How can we not be amazed by that? In today's passage, there is a Greek word that is translated very differently in the different versions. And in English, it's called paraclete. Greek is parakletos, if I am pronouncing that right. The problem with the English language is you have to basically assign one meaning of that word paraclete. But the Greek readers would have known that that Greek word was rich in multi-meanings. So let's hear what that word paraclete really means. The one who exhorts and encourages. Who doesn't need encouragement in this life? And yet we have our own encourager encouraging us to step out and teach others about God's love. To step out of our comfort zone. Second meaning, one who comforts and consoles. We've all been there. We've all needed to be comforted. Life is hard. It also means the one who appeals on one's behalf. It says, if God is sitting in the judgment seat and the Holy Spirit is reminding him, don't forget, they're wonderful people. They're growing. Yes, they mess up. But keep giving me time. I know they'll come around. Very much like Jesus on the cross, 
saying, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. The Holy Spirit is advocating for us always. One of the key things that the Holy Spirit does is remind us of Jesus, his words. Maybe you haven't ever had this happen to you, but I know I have. Suddenly, I'm reminded of the way I treated somebody that wasn't the best. And I hear those little words of Jesus saying, love one another, Rhonda. You really need to go and reconcile with this person. And you know that that's the Holy Spirit reminding you of the words of Jesus. Reminding you that yes, while we get it wrong, the Holy Spirit isn't leaving us, it's encouraging us to do better, to be better, to be like Jesus. Today, our, the last song we sang before the scripture was read, the Holy Spirit, talks about the Holy Spirit being our living hope. And I think how true that is. The Holy Spirit is such a vital part of our spiritual life. And yet, I think there is so much noise in our life that it is easy for us to block the Holy Spirit out. I mean, how many of us get up right away in the morning and we're checking emails or we're checking Facebook or we're turning on the news and our day just continues like that? There's all this noise vying for our attention. And so it's easy for us to squeeze out the Holy Spirit. Either that, or we just simply don't want to be led by another. We want to lead ourselves, control ourselves. And so we block out the Holy Spirit. I don't want to hear that I need to be less judgmental. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that I need to reach out to so-and-so. And so we block them out. But the truth is, the Holy Spirit is here to comfort, to encourage us, and to guide us. And we need to open our hearts and our lives to hearing from the Holy Spirit if we truly want to transform into more Christ-likeness. Today, we have set aside time so that we could have an anointing, a time of anointing. You see, I think anointing is one of the ways that the Holy Spirit can work in a very powerful way. Anointing is not about God fixing our situation the way we want to see it fixed, but rather being open and allowing God to work as God chooses in and through our situation in and through our lives. There's this misperception that anointing is only for those who are sick or facing surgery. And while those are very valid points, there are many reasons to be anointed. And I'm going to read those in just a moment. I'm going to invite those that are going to be participating in the anointing part of the service to go ahead and 
and make their way to their stations. But here are some of the reasons why you may feel the Holy Spirit calling you to be anointed. You may be struggling with something in your physical health, maybe emotional struggles, maybe depression. You, anointing is for you. You might be struggling with daily life. Or facing a tough decision. Maybe your struggles are financial. Or you have lost your job. Anointing is for you. It might be that some of the relationships you are involved in are having problems. Problems with coworkers, friends, marital problems, family, maybe even with one of your own brothers or sisters in Christ. Anointing is for you. Maybe your relationship with God has been on a downturn. You felt a drifting away. And you are desperately in need of a spiritual revival. Anointing is for you. Or maybe you are embarking on a new path in life. A new job, a new relationship, a new way of serving. Anointing is for you. And maybe you didn't hear your reason, but you simply feel the call of the Holy Spirit to be anointed. Remember, the Holy Spirit knows you better than you know yourself. And the Holy Spirit knows what you need. Then anointing is for you. You are welcome to go as individuals. You are welcome to go as families or as groups. There is no right or wrong way to enter into anointing. Simply listening to the Spirit. We're going to take a moment of silence, and then as you hear the praise team begin their song, you are welcome to go to any of the three of us up here or any of the three stationed in the back. There's four, but the couple is <laughs> doing it together. Um, feel free to go to who you choose to go to. For this is about you responding to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> 